It's been shown a lot through neuroscience research that the brain actually learns the best when it is not in a stagnant environment. What is much more helpful and efficient is for a student to be moving, for the environment to be changing, for their activity to be changing. This year in grade 10 science, we had a class of 34 students with two teachers. I actually walked to school with my co-teacher and we were just brainstorming one day on the way to class of how we could change up the next topic, physics. We've got this school bus that we only kind of used it on excursions and we thought, hey, why don't we use the school bus to teach physics to our students? And then we started thinking about the TV show, The Magic School Bus, and then we're like, we could call it The Physics School Bus, and we just started singing a song to each other, and we're like, the kids will totally buy into this and have a blast. The driving question behind our whole learning adventure was, how can you design a more efficient bus? We broke the learning adventure into three uh, really natural phases. How does the bus actually work? How does the bus actually move? And then how efficient is the bus? As they were learning about how the bus works and how it moves, they were designing their own version of the bus. We were teaching them about velocity and acceleration, sources of energy. They used all these to think how they're going to place their mousetrap, their source of energy, into this school bus that they're designing. The kids started with a preliminary design review where they came up with four separate designs for their mousetrap bus. One of our first experiments was figuring out what type of characteristics does the bus have. So we uh, got all the kids on the bus and we went to an area called Sandy Beach and there's a really big hill there. And so we had all the kids line up down the side of the hill with timers and we set the bus at the top of the hill with the parking brake on and then released the parking brake and the bus just started rolling down the hill due to its gravitational potential energy. And the kids were able to take measurements as the bus went down the hill and were able to make calculations about the velocity, how it changed as the bus rolled down the hill. We use that data to actually influence the design of their own mousetrap powered bus. At that point, we were able to build our mousetrap buses, put them together, tweak them a little bit. Some students use big records for wheels and others use like Lego wheels to see what kind of effects those would have on the efficiency of the bus. The final test after the students had finished building the bus powered by the mousetrap was to take it out on a school bus for a field trip to an area called Nose Hill and test their own mousetrap powered bus. Okay, on your mark. Get set. Go. We did heats to see which bus could go the furthest and then we set a distance to see uh, which bus could get there the fastest. From that they can compare the efficiency of their custom built school bus to the efficiency of our actual school bus. As we went through the physics school bus, what we wanted to do is not only change the location of where students were learning, but change what they're actually doing. Just trying to change the atmosphere and the activity as much as possible. And you can see they were always engaged. And the kids really enjoy getting out of their seats, getting outside and actually testing some science that's out there in the real world.